I coordinate a girls group in Courtney on Vancouver Island in BC and uh, I've been doing it for 15 years. I'm from the city of Toronto and I work with um, Community Action Resource Centre which is a non-profit. I'm here wearing two hats. Um, I am the director of a hip-hop literacy program called WORD. I also work at a youth employment centre with um, youth between the ages of 18 and 24. I'm from Yellowknife. I work for the YWCA there for a program called Girl Space. So uh, it's essentially a leadership and empowerment program for girls age 8 through 13. I work at Les Essentiels, the group of women francophones at Whitehorse in Yukon. I'm from St. John's and I work with the Newfoundland and Labrador Sexual Assault Crisis and Prevention Centre. And I am currently the director of a new collective in Montreal called Life After Life. And it is a collective that is led by um, formerly and currently incarcerated girls, women, um, queer, trans youth, and a lot of us uh, have our, our hands on a lot of different activist spaces in the Montreal area. I remember this girl from Dawson City and we're, we're doing like an iceberg here saying like, what are you good at? And she said, I am good at hockey. And the boy behind, beside her said, I'm good at baking. And then we're just like, we didn't even start the workshop yet and they were already like just breaking the boxes of the gender boxes of like, yes! <laughs> and that was the defining <laughs> moment. My first year doing my programming, I made a very strong agenda for the night and I did a lot of talking and two years later I talked very little and the idea to just go with it is ringing much more true, right? So a small amount of information and let them run with it and make sure they stay on topic and such and so forth. But they're the experts, right? You know, often they come in with things that have happened, you know, a suicide in the community, a car crash that's taken the lives of four kids or whatever. And they need to talk about it and they, and so we're lucky that we have facilitators and we have peer facilitators as well, older girls who, are able to re are very good at responding like in the moment or in the situation they're they're made aware that i'm respectful of what they have to say like really and i allow them to see how much what they say can change anywhere and also change them i think it's really about making them feel good too and powerful especially for young girls i just have a code and it's just very simple it's only three rules which is starting off with respecting yourself which means to have the capacity to believe that you can contribute. Um, respect others, obviously, and then respect this environment. Offer a space that, you know, is non-judgmental, um, that they're going to feel, um, you know, that they can use their voice in that space. And, you know, the, the program will just evolve from that. I don't really believe that there's ever such thing as a safe space but we can try to create a safer space. Mm -hmm. So we, we're, we're, we're driving towards a better society. We're trying to model that society within our group, but there are gonna be mistakes. And we gotta be able not to be like, oh, stop, this is not safe. Because this is the only space that they may even be able to articulate these things. We have to be able to challenge it together. You're not aware of how much you instill or what you say can, can, can really uh, encourage people. There's this young girl that I know and I don't think you realize how much impact you have on people until something like this happens and she was on the radio talking about how inspirational and how motivating and how I made her feel so much of you know who she was but she was so moved. She went on the radio and she was talking about me. She never said it to my face. For me that was it was almost heartbreaking because I never I never really thought that I was being that much of a force in her life. What doesn't work is condescending tones because um, uh, youth are very familiar with that tone. It's a stigma that they might affiliate with adults' youth relationships, so it's very important to like not um, make, mimic that or recreate that. What doesn't work is unsolicited advice, either from the adult facilitators or from the older girls who often come in really wanting to help these younger girls. So. Uh, advice giving does not work <laughs> at all. Making assumptions about um, a girl's experience or um, 
you know, what, what she's been through. Just because someone else has had a similar experience doesn't mean um, that that girl or woman is going to feel the same way. I think part of that is, you know, not judging and being open um, to, to what it is the girl needs. You know, privilege comes from a lot of different spaces, whether we're talking about race or sexuality, class, etc. But, you know, we have to be real about that because young people will, will, will see that. Young people will figure it out. So what doesn't work is shying away from conflict, not understanding your own position uh, of power and privilege, and always being outcome instead of process oriented. We had one girl who had some pretty significant mental health concerns. She identified that um, she had a lot of anxiety and she came to group and she sat on the outside of the circle. Um, the second group came along, she arrived and again she sat on the outside of the circle. We went through our group, the, the girls were starting to feel a little bit more connected um, and I could, I could see her kind of smiling every now and then but again she was on the outside, didn't participate. So the third group came, and then about halfway through the group, she just very, very slowly brought her chair into the circle. So after two groups, the rest of these girls were just, they just were so welcoming to this girl, and there was no judgment about her sitting on the outside. There was no like, oh, she's weird. There's something wrong with her. My hunch is that she was forced often, pushed into those kind of situations. And in this situation, she was allowed her time and space to be able to come into the group. And I just remember thinking, this, that's what it's about. Every year, uh, a new group of young people come through in which they're paid, they learn skills, they're able to advocate for themselves and their community. Once they graduate the program in a year, they're the ones that are gonna be the peer mentors after. So the next year, they're the ones that are gonna train the new generation. But sustainability is also um, the people who are empowered and who take ownership over this project. The idea is that we start things and let them grow. It becomes viral. And yeah. In a weird way, it becomes a movement. Mm -hmm. right. You're actually, instead of just building a service mm -hmm. that's like a one-off service you're building a movement of people mm -hmm. that are activists like I mean fierce activists mm -hmm. they could write a budget they can maybe debate mm -hmm. they could deal they can lobby they can do a media press conference I mean geez like they you send them out in the world oh my lord things are gonna change key message I give the girls and girls face all the time is you have a voice use it and um, a parent called me one day and told me that her daughter had disclosed that she had been sexually abused when the girl was five years old and she was older now. And when the mother asked the daughter why she had never told her all this time that this had happened to her, she said, I didn't realize I had a voice. So that really made me realize I have a great capacity to make a difference in these young girls' lives. has to go up against walls all the time with preconceived notions about whatever it is they're trying to tackle, whether girls should have a voice or girls should be this way, you know. I chose the word accepting because I feel in order to, to lead, you have to accept a person for who they are. I'm doing this because I love myself, I love women, because I, I, I want people to love each other, I want people to respect each other. You have to start with listening and you have to start with um, being prepared to hear things that, you, that are not always easy to hear. Being challenged by girls because of something that you've done that they don't like. Breaking barriers, breaking stereotypes, um, thinking like breaking generalizations, just trying to get out of those boxes. You have to be a risk taker to do this work. You have to be able to sometimes say, you know what, I am going to let this control issue, I'm just going to have to let this go and see where it leads and see where people take it. And sometimes where it's going may be a pretty scary place. So I would say all these, all these words um, that we've come up with today, courage, um, listening, accepting, 
those are all qualities of a good leader and that's what I expect in a leader.